Fashion trends go in and out of style, but sometimes the reason for a particular trend's fall from grace is because no one is allowed to wear it. Believe it or not, some of the most iconic looks of all time have been banned at some point in history. Women wearing pants is a fairly recent development in the history of fashion. It took so long for them to become a staple in women's wardrobes, due to having to fight for the right to wear pants, as they were traditionally considered a men's fashion item. Pants for women first started becoming mainstream after World War I, as many women had grown accustomed to wearing them to the factory jobs they took, replacing the men who went to war. In 1939, Vogue began showcasing women wearing pants, spurring the growth of the style further, also with the help of actress Katherine Hepburn. By the mid-20th century, many women were wearing pants, but the fashion was still somewhat controversial and, in some cases, banned. Universities were allowed to prohibit female students from wearing pants until 1972, and there were even rules until 1993 prohibiting women from wearing pants on the floor of the US Senate. It wasn't until 2016 that British Airways cabin crew members were finally allowed to wear pants to work after a two-year battle with the airline. Ask someone to describe a traditional Scottish men's outfit and they'll likely describe a plaid kilt. These kilts, made from a type of woven cloth called tartan, are such a powerful symbol of Scottish identity that in the 18th century, tartans were even banned for a time. Why? The Dress Act of 1746 was an attempt to punish Scots after many of the clans in the Scottish Highlands participated in a series of unsuccessful uprisings, which attempted to restore the Scottish Stuart dynasty to the British throne. After the rebelling clans suffered a bitter defeat at the Battle of Culloden in 1746, the British government wanted to prevent any future uprisings. They then passed the act, which made it illegal to wear tartans, along with other traditional clothing. This was done in the hope that it would subdue the rebellious Scottish clans by stripping them of their cultural identity, thereby weakening the clans and preventing them from rising up again. The ban on tartans remained in place until 1782, and the Battle of Culloden marked the end of the last major Scottish uprising. That they may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom! <laughs> In the 14th century, England passed a sumptuary law called a statute concerning diet and apparel. The law governed what people ate and wore. Poor families, for example, were forbidden from wearing silk and fur, while only lords could wear a jacket that revealed their knees. The law also regulated the wearing of the color purple, which was reserved for royals. This was similar to an older Roman law, which also stopped the general population from wearing purple. Romans who violated the decree were subject to the death penalty. While historical laws might have prohibited commoners from wearing purple, it's unlikely that the average person would have been able to afford a purple garment anyway. Purple dye was notoriously difficult and expensive to produce for much of history. It wasn't until the mid-19th century that synthetic purple dye was produced, making the hue widely available to the general public for the first time. While it's illegal to make fashion items out of many types of bird feathers today due to a law passed in 1918, kingfisher feathers were a special case in China during the Ming Dynasty. The feathers were prized for their beauty and difficult to obtain, making them extremely valuable and highly coveted. During the Ming Dynasty, austerity measures were put into place. Many goods during this era were prohibited to the average citizen. Among them were specific fabrics and patterns, the opulent kingfisher feathers were also kept out of the hands of all but the most high-ranking royals and government officials during this time. Even after the laws were relaxed, kingfisher feathers still remained the privilege of the highest classes in society. If 20th century sticklers had their way, no one would be wearing shorts. NPR cited several historical newspapers that covered cities which tried to abolish shorts over the years. The Moberly Motor Index reported that in 1938, Ponsdale, Pennsylvania, banned shorts on the grounds that partially uncovered legs were considered immodest. The New York Times reported that the city of Monahans, Texas, prohibited women from walking down public streets in shorts in 1944. The Associated Press reported that in 1959, Plattsburg, New York, banned anyone over the age of 16 from wearing shorts in public. Offenders could be fined $25 or imprisoned for 25 days. But the battle against shorts isn't over yet. The United States Golf Association lifted a ban on golfing shorts in the 1980s, but it still doesn't allow men to wear shorts during some tournaments. Possibly one of the most oppressive fashion garments of all time, corsets helped women achieve a smaller waist and impeccable posture. 
That doesn't sound too bad, but corsets also restricted a wearer's ability to move and could also make it difficult to breathe. You like pain? <laughs> Try wearing a corset. In the 19th century, several Eastern European countries banned corsets, but it would take America longer to follow suit. In the 20th century, it wasn't discomfort brought on by corsets that led to their ban. Instead, it was a war that helped reshape women's shapewear. There was a shortage of metal during World War I, and as corsets were made primarily from metal, the War Industries Board asked women to stop wearing corsets. By giving up their corsets, American women managed to direct 28,000 pounds of metal towards the war, enough metal to build a battleship. This temporary ban helped bring out the downfall of the corset. Women had adjusted to a more comfortable lifestyle, and within a few years, corsets were replaced by the modern bra. The do-rag is a rag or scarf worn to cover hair and is most commonly associated with black culture. The look became popular in the 1970s as a way of keeping hair in place and frizz-free. There, it evolved into a modern fashion staple and has been sported by celebs like Rihanna and Jay-Z. But a Massachusetts charter school, where most do-rag wearers were young black men, banned students from wearing them in 2018. The school's Dean of Students and School Culture, Shauna K. Clark, sent out an email stating that she apparently believed that the trend is a direct component of the school-to-prison pipeline. Unfortunately, they are also reflective of some gang culture, and they can recede your hairline. That's not setting you up for success. Critics said that black students were being unfairly targeted by the policy, and students felt like they were having their culture censored. The school eventually gave in to pressure, partially repealing the ban by allowing students to wear the head covering on campus as long as they were removed by the time classes started. If a woman cuts off all her hair, it's considered a bold fashion choice. There was a time, however, when a woman cutting off her hair could actually face pushback from society. Bobbed hair started cropping up in the early 20th century, but the style really became popular in the 1920s. Short hair wasn't just a fashion trend, but it was also a way of defying long-held gender norms. Actress Mary Gordon told Pictorial Review in 1927, I consider getting rid of our long hair one of the many little shackles that women have cast aside in their passage to freedom. Whatever helps their emancipation, however small it may seem, is well worthwhile. Not everyone was on board with women declaring their emancipation. Preachers spoke against the trend and pamphlets warning of the supposed health risks involved with bobbed hair were distributed. Many schools even banned young women from cutting off their hair. High heels might be stylish, but they aren't exactly comfortable. That's not the reason they're banned, though, at least not in the city of Carmel, California. There, you can't wear heels with a base of less than a square inch or heels that are more than two inches high unless you get a permit. The law came into being in 1963 to protect the city from lawsuits, as tree roots pushing through the pavement made sidewalks uneven and thus easy to trip on. Fortunately, the permits are available for free, and even if you don't get one, the police don't issue citations for heel wearers. High heel fans aren't so lucky in Greece, either. In 2009, officials banned high heels from being worn at ancient sites because of the damage the shoes can cause. In some cases, high heel bans have been about protecting women's rights. In 2019, Alberta, Canada made it illegal for companies to require employees to wear any shoes that could pose a safety risk, effectively banning the mandatory wearing of high heels. The Philippines passed a similar law in 2017, prohibiting companies from requiring women to wear high heels to work. Whether or not you believe that leggings are pants, there's always been a heated debate over the tight clothing trend. Leggings have been around for decades, but hatred for them didn't reach ban-worthy levels until the 2010s. Some people are concerned that the shape-revealing clothes can be too enticing. In 2019, Marianne White wrote a letter to the editor of the University of Notre Dame student paper, The Observer. White had attended church services at the university and was scandalized by young women wearing leggings as pants. She wrote, I thought of all the other men around and behind us who couldn't help but see their behinds. These Notre Dame students have a message they want to deliver loud and clear. Lay off our leggings. In 2012, a school in Canada banned leggings on campus, and that same year, a Minnesota school principal wrote a letter to parents complaining about the, quote, distracting attire, and asking them to urge their children to cover up. In 2014, a North Dakota high school took things one step further by comparing students who wear leggings to sex workers. People haven't just come down on pants for being too tight, but they've also criticized pants for being too loose. In 2008, the Chicago suburb of Linwood banned pants worn so loose they dropped below the waist in a style known as, quote, sagging. Other towns and cities across the country quickly followed suit. 
The mayor of Linwood, Eugene Williams, told the Chicago Tribune, It's not right. It's ugly and stupid. Can't you respect my little kid or my mother when you're out? I wouldn't walk around my own house with my pants hanging down. Why do I have to accept that out in public? In 2011, Florida passed a bill that required schools to discipline students whose pants sagged low enough to show their underwear. That same year, public transit in Fort Worth, Texas began turning away passengers wearing sagging pants. The fight against the trend is ongoing. In 2018, South Carolina lawmakers proposed a bill to outlaw the trend. The following year, police chased a young man for violating a ban on sagging pants in Shreveport, Louisiana, opening fire after they saw he was carrying a gun. The incident has led to demands to repeal the ban. As far as fashion trends go, hair bows seem innocent enough. Bows have long held a cutesy appeal and are traditionally associated with young girls. But when they first came into vogue in the 17th century, it was fashionable for both men and women to rock them. In the 2010s, Dance Moms reality star Jojo Siwa brought hair bows into the 21st century with oversized bows. They became so popular that tweens scrambled to copy the look. Siwa eventually came out with her own line of hair bows called, appropriately, Jojo Bows. In 2017, schools across the United Kingdom banned the bows, claiming they're too distracting in an educational setting. Australia followed suit. The ban baffled many parents, but Siwa herself urged her fans to follow their school dress codes. Follow the rules. If your school did ban my bows, that is very unfortunate, but follow the rules. Perhaps the strangest banned fashion trend is a modern ban on lacy underwear in Russia, Belarus, and Kazakhstan. It's not the provocative nature of the garments themselves that's the issue. Instead, the ban is a safety measure. In 2014, customs unions put the measures in place in order to protect wearers from skin problems caused by wearing clothing that doesn't absorb enough moisture. Under these measures, clothing that comes in contact with skin must contain at least 6% cotton. That's bad news for lace and most other luxury lingerie, most of which is made with less than 4% cotton. While the ban doesn't specifically make it illegal to own such clothing, it does bar their import and manufacture. The ban didn't sit well with the public, who quickly took to social media to post pictures of themselves wearing lacy undergarments. Several people were even detained in Kazakhstan after publicly protesting the restriction. Local news in Kazakhstan reporting on a woman being detained for demanding the right to wear lace knickers. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more list videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.